In the summer of 1990, Dallas was experienced one of its record-breaking years of homicides with over 500 homicides in a single year. But to me, working a walking beat on Jefferson, I worked many, many of the shootings and stabbings that occurred in North Oak Cliff. But what really hit heart with me was when prostitutes that we had been working with over the past several months started turning up dead. First one in south of the city that worked on our beat regularly, and then another one that we knew very, very well that was a tough prostitute that would never let herself be picked up and taken advantage of, let alone killed by a, by a killer. We took this to heart and started looking into the case. And before you knew it, we've discovered Dallas indeed had a serial killer, a serial killer that was preying on women, that was torturing them, that was killing them, that was cutting their eyes out and keeping the eyes for trophies. A serial killer that made headlines not only around the city, but around the state and nationally. A serial killer that was on our beat. I started taking the case personally after the second victim, a victim that I knew extremely well that I had rested many, many times, was captured. We talked to many of the witnesses and stopped prostitutes that said they thought they knew who the killer was. As a matter of fact, one night stopped a prostitute with her trick. And uh, as we were about to arrest the gentleman, she begged us not to arrest him. She said, he's the one that saved me. We said, what are you talking about? And she said, he saved me from the killer. Right then I knew that we were on to something and started putting my notes together and putting my information together on who we thought the suspect was, where the killings were taking place, and the motive behind the killings. After a few weeks, I brought those results down to homicide. And as I said before, we have so many obstacles that we have to cover, overcome in our life. After I presented the material of homicide, they told me, you're a beat cop. Go back to the beat. Let the professionals take care of this. Even though I had a ton of information on the murders and witness statements, they said, go back to the beat. Well, you know what? I did go back to the beat. But I didn't stop working on the case. As a matter of fact, me being refuted by my own homicide investigators, I thought we were on the same team. I thought we wanted the same result. Less dead women. But it wasn't to be. Shortly after that, a third victim was found. We now had three victims, women who were tortured by a serial killer, who had their eyes taken out, and the killer was becoming more aggressive with each homicide. Each homicide became closer together in time. Each homicide became much more brutal and much more vicious, and I knew we had to catch the killer. Using some emerging technology at the time, computers, I ran every type of database that I could on the city system but it was to no avail, looking for any type of link that I could find. But when I went down to the county system, to the constable's office down the street, is when I had access to an entire new database, a database of birth certificates, of tax records, and all kinds of voter registration information. By plugging in the addresses of where the bodies were found, which we now know is geographic profiling, I was able to ascertain that there was one individual that had a common relationship where each of these bodies were found. He had property that he owned around Oak Cliff, close to where each of these bodies had been dumped in the middle of the street and displayed for everyone to see. I ran his name and found out that uh, he was born in the area. I found out that he owned property in many locations in the area. And then I ran another record and found out that he had just voted. Finally, I ran a, a, a third record and found out that he had also passed away. I kind of thought to myself, I said, wait a minute. We don't have dead people vote in Dallas, at least not on a regular basis. So I started to dig a little deeper and find out that the individual I was searching for, the property owner, had indeed died. But his son was alive and well. His son, that we would find out, had convictions for sexual assault, for burglary, and for offenses going back literally 20 years. His son, that would end up being Dallas's first serial killer, and who would we finally go back to homicide with an entire case file and said, we know who the killer is. 
I have the information that I've collected and we need to get warrants. Homicide had no choice at that point. They had to go. Women were dying in Oak Cliff. We raided the house and arrested Dallas's only serial killer, the eyeball killer.